integrated tests are a scam. That's the title of a great talk by J.B. Rainsberger. Uh, the talk has also been referenced in a number of other talks, uh, one by Gary Bernard and one by a guy, unfortunately I can't remember his name right now, but I'll link all of these three talks in the description and I highly recommend you to actually check out all of these talks because they're excellent if you're into testing and if you've been thinking a lot about unit testing versus integration testing. The claim in the talk, as far as I understand it, is that we should not be doing integration tests at all. J.B. Rainsberger gives a potential solution or an argument as to what we should be doing instead. I won't dig into that now, but I want to just spend a few minutes emphasizing what the problem is that he outlines. <clears throat> the problem can sort of be summed up in a single word. The single word is complexity. Integration tests have too much complexity in combinatorial terms, in the sense that there are too many tests to write if you are doing integration tests, so you should not trust yourself with the task of writing and maintaining all of these tests. So again, the point is combinatorics. If you're doing unit testing, you're isolating, right? So when you're doing unit testing, you're testing a single unit and you're mocking all of the boundaries, which means that the only cases you have to test are the cases of the component under test. So let's be very specific. Let's say that we have a fish class and the fish has a method which is called eat. And the, the fish is stateful, so it has two states. Either it's hungry or it's not hungry. If it's hungry and we call eat, then the fish is fed. If it's not hungry and we call eat, then nothing simply happens. <clears throat> that means we have two states. We need to test eat when the fish is not hungry, and we need to test eat when the fish is hungry. The problem is that if we have this fish and we put this fish into a context, when we are integrating with the fish from some other place, then we have to test these two states for every other state that we want to test. This sounds super confusing. Let, let me be more specific. So say that we also have a pond class and all of these fish live in the pond class. So essentially pond is a glorified collection. The pond has a bunch of fish and say that the pond instead has a feed method and the feed method takes maybe a number representing the amount of food. And what we're interested in, for example, I'm just making up a hypothetical system, what we would be inter interested in would be, for example, how much of the food actually went to feeding the fish and how much went to waste. In other words, how much of the food wasn't eaten because no fish were hungry. So this means that when we are testing the feed method of the pond class, we need to test it with fish of different kinds. We need to test it with hungry fish and we need to test it with non-hungry fish. So in that case, we need to instantiate a bunch of fish, some that are hungry and some that are not hungry, and then test the, the feed method of the pond class with fish of different kind. Now, this doesn't sound too bad, but if we scale this up, theoretically, it's actually quite absurd. Because what we actually would want to test in the pond class is the fact that the pond class delegates eating to each of the fish. What, what the responsibility of the of the feed method actually is, is to iterate over the collection of fish and then feeding all of the fish. It shouldn't necessarily care about whether they are hungry or not. So imagine, for example, that we not only have a pond class, but imagine also that we have, say, a garden class. So a garden, again, a glorified collection. So a garden is a collection of ponds and the pond is a collection of fish. Now, say that we there also have a feed method, right? Maybe it makes more sense to think of it in terms of a a maintenance method or a, something like a maintain method so it would be more generic so we would say maintain and then there would be lots of garden stuff going on such as watering the plants and feeding the fish and whatnot right but for now just to keep things simple think of it in terms of that the garden also has a feed method which essentially calls feed on all of the specific ponds and remember again the thing that we're interested in in this system is that from the outmost class from the from the garden instance, we want to know how much of the food actually went to feeding the fish and how much went to waste. So let's just pinpoint what the system does. So we have the garden class, we call feed. The garden class calls feed on all of the ponds. All of the ponds call feed on all of the fish. Some fish are hungry and some fish are not hungry. A hungry fish consumes a single unit of food. And then in the end, we get back a number that represents the number of fish that were actually not fed. Or in other words, the number representing the amount of food that were not consumed. 
Okay, how do we test the garden class? The number of states, when we're testing the garden, the number of states depends on the number of states that we have in the pond. And the number of states we have in the pond depends on the number of states we have in the fish. And again, if you then return back to unit tests, what unit tests have to do is simply to test that the garden delegates appropriately to the pond and that the pond delegates appropriately to the fish. So the number of tests we have to write when we have isolated unit tests are significantly fewer. So if you scale this up, you'll quickly re or you're, you'll realize how quickly this becomes absolutely absurd. Let's generalize. The thing is this, if instead of talking about a garden and a pond and fish, let's talk about A, B and C. So it's actually a combinatorial problem. So the number of cases we have to test in A is the number of different cases we have to test in A times the number of different cases we have to test in B times the number of different cases we have to test in C. A lot. Going further, if we're also integration testing B, then the number of cases we have to test in B are the number of different cases in B times the number of different cases in C. And then if we're unit testing, we would also be testing the number of different cases in C. So again, really quite absurd. I'm not saying it's easy, because only doing unit testing means that you're probably not testing whether you are integrating the components correctly together, which is why people usually do un uh, integration testing. So we won't dig into the answer of how, how to actually do that now, but I would highly recommend that you watch through J.B. Rainsberger's video where he does give an answer to how to write more unit tests that ensure that your units are not only functional when in isolation, but actually are coupled in a correct manner. So that's it for today. If you find this more confusing than helpful, please let me know in the comments so we can dig down further. And if you appreciate this video, please do give me a thumbs up, helps massively. And for more code talks like this, of course, subscribe. Subscribe!